uh, my name's Rick, and uh, back out again, me and Billy. We found this spot that we used a while back. This is a bed that me and Billy kept on a, a few weeks back. It's only a quick job to knock it up within reason, but uh, it did the job for the night. Chucked it down all night long, but uh, we had a tarp over the top here, which kept us dry. So. That was a good night and uh, it was nice to sleep on something different instead of the hammock. I chose this because uh, Billy could join me on it and sleep with me. It's not quite as easy to put a dog in a hammock with you. Quite a lot of midges around today. As you can see Billy's trying to eat a few. All the reasons for putting this hat on. But, uh, so I've, I've been asked uh, been given a couple of uh, questions on what sort of what sort of kit we might use for bushcrafting, uh, what sort of kit I might use, just basic sort of kit. Now kits, it's a never ending spectrum, you can go mad, but the idea of bushcraft is ideally you're going to use the natural environment around you, just similar to this bed, we'd use the natural environment. Part of looking for a campsite would be something with material to make things and, and there we've used the wood, the natural environment to make a bed. So you wasn't carrying a hammock with you or you wasn't, you know, I had a, I had a tarp with me but I wasn't carrying a tent or anything like that. So looking at what sort of kit I carry and what sort of kit you need for bushcrafting, uh, Dave Canterbury sort of did it well, I think it was Dave Canterbury who did it, with the six C's. So the six C's pretty good really for sort of encompassing what you'll need for outdoor living for bushcraft even for survival in a survival situation if a plane went down if you could scavenge the five seas the six seas you'd be all right you'd be on your way so we'll look at uh, look at what i carry to do with them i've got my rucksack here it's a bit of a big rucksack today for this sort of uh, i'm out on my own with billy I usually use this one for an overnight or for group use. If I'm out with a group and I'm carrying more kit. Saying that I've got a bit more kit than I would normally carry in, in the if I'm just solo. But solo wise I'm usually alright with something around 30 litres or so, this is a bit bigger. So it's a good rucksack though, just an ex-army one, cheap as chips. Yeah, you can go out and spend 300 quid on a rucksack or you can get some of it cheap as chips, 20, 25 quid, whatever. Does the job fine. And I'm not one for spending lots of money on kit, me. I'm one for using it. If you think back to the old days, our ancestors didn't have 300 pound knives and 100 pound axes and 300 pound rucksacks and all the rest of it, and they made use of what they've got. Don't get me wrong, if I had the money, it'd be nice to have some good kit. But the kit I've got does the job. And uh, it's just about being out here and learning to work with what you've got and the resources around you. Yeah. So, we'll go for the first C. So the first C will be, uh, let's see what I pull out my rucksack. Oh, we'll go with cutting tools. So for bushcraft basically, if I'm out on my own, I'm all right with, I've got a simple mora knife. So a knife, a cutting tool. So I've got a knife, a simple mora, that'll do me. I've also, ideally for me, I like to carry a Laplander saw, yeah it's a good mix, so I've got the knife and the saw, yeah, that's two of my cutting tools, and then finally just to round that off, I use a hatchet, this is only a cheap one, you can get some, uh, you can pay a lot of money, get some nice ones on, and you get your money's worth out of them, they're not, they're not crazy money, but uh, sometimes, depending what sort of work you're doing, it's handy to have a and actually you can use your two hands. So something a bit longer than this, 20 inch handle would be, it'd be perfect. But this does the job for small campcraft camp uh, chores. So I've got my axe, my saw, my mora. That'll do me usually. But, uh, I mean, depending what, you're what you want to do. If you're gonna be making spoons and dishes and things like that. Yeah, I've got a knife there for carving out then. I mean, I would normally make my own sort of uh, 
gear while you're out and about. I mean, this is a spoon I've made, so along with my cutting tools, I've got a few little bits and pieces like that. Yeah. So they're the main things, a knife, a saw and an axe, and you can do most things with them. They will see anybody right in, in the outdoors, in the wild. That's your cutting tool, so that could be your first thing. Yep. With them, you can skin rabbits, you can prep food, or skin animals, you can prep food, you can make things, you can make your beds, you can make your shelters, yep. you can make tools, you can make weapons if need be, you can make traps, etc. So, if I, was to, if I was to just have one of them things, it'd probably be a nice sharp axe, yeah, that'd be, you could do most things with that, but ideally I'll carry three of them, very easy to carry the mora, very easy to carry the saw, yeah, the axe is a little bit heavier, but it's not so bad. So, cutting tools, so, next thing I'd say cover, so, cover is basically something to protect you from the elements, so somebody practicing in the outdoors for me, I just carry a tarp, yeah, and that'll do me most of the year round, yeah. I can, I can just, I can, well, I can live with this all year round. If any more, I do fire wise and shelter wise, I can make a million shelters from this. Loads of different shelters, set it up in loads of different ways. I've got some pegs in it today because I'm not particularly bothered about the weight today. If I was keeping me pack down to a minimum, I'd just make me own pegs. I'd leave them at home and make me own pegs. So I've got my tarp, yeah. Cover could be the clothing you're wearing, yeah. But if you're out, depending what time of the year, I mean, it's summer now. We're looking at about 17 degrees today, maybe a bit more. It's a bit cooler in wood, but uh, beautiful day. But if I was out in winter, the cover would be a full set of waterproofs and maybe a down layer, etc. So that could be cover. But a tarp, brilliant. So. That's my cutting tools, my cover. Another seed would be containers. So in a survival situation, if I could scavenge a container, yep. Something as simple as this will do me if I'm on my own. Yep. So that's just a container. I can make water safe in that. I can cook food. Yep. I could even carry water if I want. Carry other things. To make a container in the wild takes a little bit more time. Well, quite a lot more time. So if you can carry a container, yeah. You can also people you can, if you're carrying water with you, you could have a, a stainless steel water bottle that you can cook with as well. Ideally, if it's multitasking, you can cook as well. Yeah, just a plastic one. It'd be all right just for carrying your water. But if you're going to carry something, ideally a stainless steel one. But down to budgets and everything again. As long as you've got a container, you can carry water you're all right yeah and I carry my zebra pot it's no big deal I can carry it in a plastic bottle and then I can boil it up in my zebra pot I always like to have a cup as well yeah. bog standard cup for me yeah so so we've got uh, we've got containers we've got cover we've got cutting tools yeah And then uh, combustion. So combustion doesn't need to be this big. I just these are mainly the stuff I've been using for group use. So I've got a little bit more gear in them. But combustion, ideally you want three methods if, if you can. So I've just got a little. Uh, there's a fire steel in here which I would use most of the time. I enjoy using the fire steel. I've got uh, a little waterproof thing. It used to be like one of these beans ones. So in here I've got uh, lighters and bits and pieces, yeah, a couple of lighters. So my fire steel, a couple of lighters. That's three methods to uh, to light a fire if I wanted. Yeah, very easy. If uh, if you're in the outdoors, I've also got a pouch in here. So I'll just collect tinder when I'm moving about sometimes. Yeah, there's a bit of, there's all sorts of bits of tinder in here and stuff that I can uh, use to light fires. The deer moving about. So, 
So, then you'll be looking at uh, another sea, it would be Coidage. So, Coidage, pure and simple it is, make life easy in the, in the outdoors. Bits of rope and things like that, yep. I carry several different sizes of rope. Yep, some, uh, some paracord, all different sizes of rope, the mozzie net. So I carry various different, depending on what I'm doing, I might carry some, uh, even some climbing rope, some dynamic rope. Yep. But uh, I always have some of this sort of stuff, some of this, this sort of thickness as well. It's ideal for putting Billy on, stopping running away, chasing the deer, so yeah, when I'm not watching him. So, but if you were to make, it would take time. I mean, it's easy enough to make cordage, natural cordage, and it's pretty quick within reason, but it's going to take time. And to make a lot of it, to make, to make that much, it would take me a lot of time. So we've got uh, we've got the five C's there. We've got the cutting tools. We've got the cordage. We've got the cover. We've got the containers, and we've got combustion. So they're the five main things you need. Oh, you are ideally to smooth it when you're outside. If you don't want to be roughing it too much, you've got them five things. You can do basically anything. You can catch food. Yeah. You can uh, carry water. You can make uh, water safe. You can build your shelters. You can uh, you can do almost any project outdoors with those those things. <coughs> if you don't have them, or even just uh, well, they're going to enable the cutting tools, etc. Is going to enable you to practice more bushcraft skills. You can make fire, like we said, using the bow drill, etc. Which we'll do on a different different day. So you could make fire using that, and you could make your cordage and everything else. But obviously, it's going to be very time consuming. So that's my sort of kit, and uh, <coughs> it'd vary depending on the time of year, etc. But they're the basics. And they're the basics that you ne that all you need, and it's not expensive to get that kit, is it? A Mora, thirteen quid, Laplander saw, I don't know, twenty quid or whatever they are. You could have a cheap pack as long as it's sharp. Uh, a tarp can take, you know, your containers cheap enough, fifteen quid for a zebra pot. 20 quid rucksack and you're ready to rock and roll. It's just about getting out here and uh, picking up your skills. Picking up the knowledge to use what you've got. Yep. Instead of carrying loads of kit, carry loads of knowledge. That's the plan. So, me and Billy are going to have a wander today. We're going to find, uh, find a resource now. We're going to find some water, find some uh, wild edibles find somewhere nice to uh, set up, it's, it's alright in here, a lot of midges about, I might find somewhere a bit higher on the moor somewhere with a little bit of a breeze, keep the midges away, and uh, we're going to get a fire cracked up and a bit of uh, a bit of dinner. that for an example, Ganoderma, Artis bracket fungus, that's a beast, it's called Artis bracket because they used to carve, they could draw on the on the bottom, on the inside, you scrape through the skin and it leaves a, a brown or black pores underneath, so you could draw on it and when it dries it becomes permanent, that's why they call it Artis bracket, it's good for fire lighting, or for uh, holding an ember, we can process that and use that for fires. That's a beast, though. That raspberries are out. Beautiful. Makes a change from all the blackberries. Have a few raspberries for a change. Gorgeous. Flies are on a mission.
bilberries are out. Plenty of bilberries. And ideal for pancakes. I did that 15 years ago. Should know better really. I mean I wasn't even a young lad 15 years ago. Should never really carve your name into trees. At the end of the day, that's the tree's skin, same as our skin. It can let bacteria and infection in and it can harm the tree. But yeah, 15 years ago, Becky, B E C K Y, and then I love art. Yeah, well nearly 15 years ago. She's 15 next month. But yeah, should never do it really. What we'll do is we'll let this let this boil. I'll get a brew on. Have a brew while it like burns down the embers, and I reckon we'll get some uh, bilberry pancakes on. Sounds like a plan. Billy's chilling in the grass over there. The sun's out. I can hear the river running next to me. Not a soul around for miles. Yeah, but when you're cooking. So it's flames for boiling, embers for cooking. These flames are getting a little bit high in places. I can see them starting to burn my natural cordage at the top. So I'm hoping this is going to boil pretty soon. It will be any time now. Start to burn a bit. Yep. So we'll catch this is dry that. So I made that the other week. It was quite dry. So it's going to be a decent tinder actually. Anyway, it's going to be ready soon. Side note, if you've ever got your axe around camp, make sure it's uh, covered, or if it's not covered, make sure it's buried in, in a trunk or something so the blade's not about. Don't just leave it on the floor with the blade open. Absolutely starving. Ready for some food. Billy's partial to a bit of uh, a bit of blueberry as well. You like them as well, don't you, Billy boy? A few leaves in there. Bit of extra roughage, didn't do anyone any harm. Mmm, look at that, beautiful. Hi oh, Billy, what do you reckon, eh? Can you try some blueberry? Watch out, watch out. Good boy. Gorgeous. Absolutely fantastic. Good thing that, isn't it? Hey, want a little bit? Yeah. You've got to keep your dog uh, energized as well, aren't you? Well, thanks for joining me today. Hope you've enjoyed it.
mainly about the five C's for survivability and bushcraft, living in the outdoors, what to carry or what to try and uh, gather if you can. So a few extra bits chucked in today while we were out and about. Hope you've enjoyed it, like I say, and uh, we'll see you next time. Last thing, then make sure this fires out properly, especially in an environment like this. I'm on the edge of the moors, there's a lot of dry grass around, so what we don't want is for this fire to spread. So I to make sure this fire is out properly, make sure it's not going to relight, and I want to clear the area. I don't want to, I don't want to leave any unsightly black messes on the floor. So I'm going to tidy that up now, but over and out. Hope you've liked it, like I say, give it a thumbs up if you have, and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.